According to Standish Group, 49% of software projects fail completely and 52% are over budget. Artificial intelligence is a main driver of emerging technologies, from big data to robotics to Internet of Things, making it easier for businesses to design, build, deploy, and maintain software. Builder AI is an AI-powered software development platform that does not require coding knowledge to turn ideas into reality. Sasha, what is the Builder AI platform? You know, when we think about what's happening in the world today, you're seeing this huge bridge between the traditional industry and the digital industry. And so what Builder is really doing is it's democratizing access to custom software, um, right the way from a small business up to an enterprise. And as you're democratizing it, there's an element of being able to scale and grow with the business and keep costs under control at the same time, which is a big challenge for IT departments that are trying to scale own software today. Yeah, and look, and I think that's an important point. When, when somebody doesn't know how to build software, they don't know how to deploy it. They don't know how it scales. They don't know the, the service partners they need to go to. They don't know they need to go to Azure. Um, they don't know who to use for payments. And our platform is designed around this vision of build, run, and scale. And our vision is really that you could be Joe's Pizzeria and become Domino's, and you didn't have to move off the platform. You mentioned Azure, but there's a whole bunch of tools that Microsoft offers to help businesses with that underlying infrastructure. Why has Microsoft been a good partner for you? You know, when, when, you, when you think about partnerships, there has to be a unified vision. And in, in our discussions with Microsoft, from the first conversations we've had, um, right the way through to our discussions with Satya, I, I think what we've seen is a very aligned, unified vision. The one thing that connects everyone who's trying to build software is they can all talk. But not all of them can be given a white canvas. And when you, when you think about the Builder platform and the Microsoft platform, um, it's perfect complements. The things that Microsoft does really well, the things that we do really well. And when you bridge them together, you have a perfect uh, starter kit, you have a perfect digital transformation kit, and you have a perfect kit for entrepreneurs that are trying to build MVPs. And so is that really what Builder AI is about, is giving people the options to narrow to a software spec that they may not have even envisioned originally themselves, but it gets to that conclusion more quickly? Yeah, you know, the biggest problem and why 82% of software applications that are being built fail is because they don't do what it needed to do. And so you have a good human in the loop in the consulting process, you get a stellar output. You get one person subpar and you're rogered. Yeah, it's right? a disaster. It's a disaster. Um, and so the question is, how do we use the collective insight to ask the right questions so that we can fill in the gaps. If you ask a customer, what do you want to do? They'll say, I need to be able to invoice people. They won't think about safe cards. They won't think about which payment gateway. Those are not natural questions. So a part of this is pulling that out and then enriching the model. So you're her. filling that in for people as they go along through the journey? Yes, we're filling that in. We're filling that in from a design perspective. You know, if you imagine, um, I give you a, say, what do you want the app to look like? Well, again, I'm giving you a white canvas. You wouldn't know where to start. I say, here are six login screens. Here are five views of a map. Do you want to do a terrain map or a road map? Um, the minute I give you options, you can actually start to crystallize your own thought. And what's really important in this journey is to get someone excited because that's what gets them over the fear of failure. You wouldn't want to narrow it so much though that people start to feel like, now how do I differentiate from my competitors? So how do you find that balance? Yeah, and, and, and I call this the tending to infinity problem. If I gave you two options and the entire billion person population of the earth had to choose two options, there's no differentiation. Um, we have 600 features. Each feature can be customized. So number one, 600 computationally is half a billion options. So you are differentiated just by features. In the end, you get something which is unique, but it's tended to infinity. It wasn't infinite. There's also an element of the data you're building and the visibility that Builder AI has to what features people are using would put you in a position actually to make recommendations as well. So have you gone to that layer as well where you have a recommender? As everyone does now, we have an AI. Her name is Natasha. She's synonymous for all of the automation, but um, I think the precipice of it has been that she is your product manager. Uh, and what we realized really early on was when you recommended features, people got put off. And so a key part of what, what we've built is this dynamic conversation tree that uses the proximity of features and their mathematical relationship with each other, like the collective insight we have. But instead it asks you a really like benign question. Would you like to do payments? 
do you want to manage inventory? Will your customers be coming back really often? Do you want to save them time and have saved cards? And the minute someone says yes and you suggest a feature, they're less likely to re reject it. And the rejection is not because we're trying to sell them more. Because many cases are like, you don't need that feature. Because I think that's the other key. You need to be able to tell a customer, you don't need this. And that builds trust.